all over the world. Species clash in nature's savage battle of survival. On dry land, at the water's edge, and under the sea, all are locked in deadly conflict. Animals fight tooth and claw to win food, territory, and rights to the bloodline. From the plains of Africa to the marshes of South America, there are no rules. This is Animal Fight Night. Wolf packs are an extended family of killers. At the head of the family is the alpha male, and he'll defend his position to the death. American gray wolves are big. They can weigh nearly as much as a man. They work together to bring down prey. under the lead of the privileged Alpha. He gets to eat first. He mates with the Alpha female. But he has to be on guard. There's a rival on the scene. A lone wolf is looking for trouble. He's a young renegade tired of being out in the cold. He wants to break up this family by becoming their new alpha male. Time for the showdown. It's a sneak attack. The lone wolf targets the alpha below the ribs. He latches on with his inch-long canines. If he rips through to the gut, he could kill the Alpha. But the Alpha's fur protects him. It's two and a half inches deep, and his winter underfur thickens it by a third. The Alpha goes for the neck, its basic instinct. Severing the jugular is the quickest, cleanest kill. But not this time. Wolves are cursorial hunters. They chase down their prey on the run. When the alpha runs off, the lone wolf's instinct is to bring him down. Then he targets the thinner flesh on the Alpha's face and makes it count. The Alpha retaliates with an attack on the muzzle. It's how wolves show dominance and an assault on their greatest asset, their sense of smell. Pinning down his rival proves he's the top dog and frees up his jaw. He has 42 teeth. His back teeth are called carnassials. Extremely sharp, they cut through flesh like a knife. Powerful jaw muscles produce a bone-crushing bite pressure of 1,500 pounds per square inch. That's more than 12 times the power of a human bite. The lone wolf can't get on top so he aims low. The protective fur on the leg is thinner, so the potential for damage is higher. And the lame wolf is a dead wolf. The alpha bites back. It's a race against time.
Maw's not broken, but it's weak. The Lone Wolf is finally on top. He targets the face again. And forces the Alpha down. The position of top dog is there for the taking. But the Alpha digs deep. Fighting through the pain, he throws his injured leg into one last shoulder hole. He's back on top, and he's not giving an inch this time. The lone wolf can't believe what's happening. He's got no answer. And he's driven back into the snow. Bloodied but victorious, the Alpha holds on to the top spot and returns to join his mate. And the Lone Wolf must find another family to break up. Males fight savagely to defend their dominance, but no fight is as desperate as a mother defending her young. A lioness, up to 400 pounds in weight and 10 feet long. Every inch, a killing machine. And she isn't hunting alone. She's part of a team. Her eyes are six times more sensitive than a human's. But one target is easy to spot. The giraffe is the tallest animal on Earth with front legs reaching up to six feet from shoulder to hoof, and an elongated neck of nearly eight feet. Lions jump 12 feet high so they can bring down an adult giraffe. But today, there's an easier meal on offer. At about 220 pounds, this baby giraffe would feed these lionesses for the next two days. The mother turns her back for just one regrettable moment. Maternal instinct kicks in. She attacks, and they scatter. The big cats are cunning. They spread out, so one is always in the mother's blind spot. The plan is to draw the mother away, then finish off the injured calf. but they have to dodge her deadly defenses. Her front legs are powerful clubs. Large retractor muscles stretch as she kicks forward and then fire on the backswing. With six foot legs and hooves about 12 inches across, she has every chance of landing a killer blow. The full power of her 2,500 pound frame is behind every stamp. If she connects, she can shatter spine or skull. And she's getting closer. The lioness gets nearer to spring the trap and dodges death. The lioness's plan works. The mother instinctively chases her leaving her baby calf exposed. The frantic mother mounts a second rescue bid. But the lioness is too quick. And the mother's hooves 
strike her baby. It will be almost two years before she breeds again. Her personal tragedy is a blood-soaked testimony to the benefits of teamwork. Some animals don't need backup. The waters off the coast of California are home to a silent assassin. This California two-spot octopus haunts the seabed in a constant search for food. And he's hungry. Octopuses are a shellfish's worst nightmare. They're deadly hunters with sharp, polarized vision. Eight tentacles give them the edge. Hundreds of suckers along each one provide an inescapable grip on their prey. And they have specialized chemical detectors. 16 million sense organs, called chemoreceptors, chemically analyze the surroundings, literally testing the water to sniff out potential prey in all directions. This octopus is searching out the scent of shrimp. This guy looks delicious. He's a California mantis shrimp living in a seabed burrow off Santa Catalina Island. At around a foot long, he looks like an easy but satisfying meal. The octopus is at least four times his size. Mantis shrimp are fast, covering 30 body lengths per second. An Olympic swimmer would have to reach 130 miles an hour to match that. So he could flee. But he's no quitter. He makes a stand at the entrance to his burrow. He performs what's called a Merrill spread, making himself as big as he can. The octopus isn't buying this scare tactic. Shrimp sushi sounds too good. But this is no ordinary shrimp. He has a secret weapon that has to be seen to be believed. This hungry octopus has his mind set on a shrimp supper. He's ready to strike. He ignores the shrimp's warning display. But this shrimp's not bluffing. His front claws are like clubs. The octopus reels. He doesn't know what's hit him. A network of springs, linkages, and latches power the mantis shrimp's specially adapted raptorial claws. They work like a crossbow, suddenly unleashing a massive burst of energy when he delivers a punch. It combines the acceleration of a 22 caliber bullet with a force almost as strong as the crushing jaws of an African lion. The stunned octopus is down, but not out. The shrimp is only just getting started. It's a bullseye, right between the eyes. He's just too quick for his opponent. The octopus can't take any more. He heads off to terrorize the next neighborhood. 
as a final Meryl spread reminds him, there's plenty more where that came from. But some killers don't need arms to pack a punch. Snakes are permanently on the radar of this California ground squirrel because she has a young family. They're hidden in an underground burrow. With 200 feet of tunnels around the nest, they should be safe. Unless this gopher snake picks up their scent. He can reach nine feet in length. He grips large prey with his teeth and then squeezes them to death in his coils. He can eat an entire litter of baby ground squirrels in one sitting. Mom spots the snake. And she's mad. She'll stop the snake before it finds her burrow or die trying. The snake strikes, finding its range. But mom won't give up. Strike two, zoning in. Strike three, but he's not out. To have a shot, the squirrel has to open herself up to attack. The snake forms his neck into a tight S-shape. It's a power base to fire out a fastball. But the squirrel steals in and bites down hard. She has four tough chiseled central incisors, ground sharp like axe blades. If she gets a clean shot, she might cut clean through the snake's spinal cord. But if the snake hits home, he could squeeze the life out of her, literally. He has four rows of backwards curved teeth made to grip. They're not venomous, but give him a fish hook hold. They're designed to lock on for good, allowing his coils to wrap around his victim. The snake overreaches. Now he's open to attack. But the squirrel makes a big mistake. She attacks too close to the snake's head. This could be the end. A mother ground squirrel has a gopher snake on the run. She targets his vital organs, striking close to his head. A whisker from disaster. She learns her lesson. She focuses her bites on his tail. She's one sassy squirrel. Her strategy's wearing out the snake. She even rides his back, tiring him further. Exhausted, the snake makes a last stand. His tail's taking a hammering, but he isn't finished yet. The squirrel can't risk going for the kill, but this snake can't risk coming back. She gives him the eyes. Then, swaggers off. The snake gets a hard lesson from squirrel fight school. And the squirrel's young family gets a lifeline. The 
mighty black bear. There are up to 725,000 living in North America. Six and a half feet tall, standing upright, and weighing up to 900 pounds, he hunts our woodlands and mountainsides. But why hunt when you can get takeout? Black bears are omnivores. They'll eat pretty much anything a human will. And they need to eat at least 20,000 calories a day. It's August in Rockaway, New Jersey. This four-year-old black bear needs to bulk up for the winter. Hunger is a black bear's main natural cause of death. So this bear's coming to town. But here's his problem. A bear in residence. Two hungry bears, one outcome. In a classic display of black bear aggression, they slowly brandish their razor sharp teeth. It's a standoff to see who will crack first. <laughs> Nearly half a ton of raw muscle and sinew collides, sending the brawl crashing onto the street. Up on hind legs, they recruit the full force of their weight to wrestle. Black bear males rarely fight each other, as the results can be catastrophic. One and a quarter inch claws at the end of stocky forelimbs aim to slash through their thick pelt. But a better technique is wrestling the other to the ground and trying to sink a deep bite into the neck. The intruder has the defender right where he wants him. Defender backs off, appearing to concede defeat. But he's got home advantage. He knows the lay of the land, and he draws the intruder back up to the uneven ground. Using the huge stack of muscles in their shoulders, they rear up and lock on. The defender backs his opponent onto the slippery slope and pins him down. The intruder tries to wriggle free, but he's locked in a bear hug. The defender drives home his victory. This neighborhood isn't big enough for the both of them. It's dinner for one, because black bears don't share. For a titanic battle of the bone crushers, trade claws for rock-hard clubs. In the Arctic wastes, this six-year-old caribou bull is at his peak. Bull caribou weigh up to 700 pounds and reach seven feet long. At over four feet, his antlers are more than 50% taller than a moose's. But just six months ago, they didn't exist. They're made from the fastest growing mammal bone tissue on the planet. At their peak, just before the breeding season, they're lethal weapons in the fight for the bloodline. This big bull's huge antlers could win him a prized mate. But has he got the right stuff? It's fall. Temperatures begin the drop to below minus 30. The caribou migrate south and then search for a mate. 
The big bull's neck muscles are now five times their normal size. He's fighting fit. And he has his eye on one particular cow. She'll breed just once this season, giving birth to one calf. And he wants the calf to be his. The competing males are in a race to win her. The caribou can run nearly 50 miles per hour. The bull uses his speed to catch and take on his biggest rival. Antler to antler. His antlers are as hard as granite. They branch off into spikes called tines. The brow tines grow toward the front and curve upwards. His tines are tough enough to break bone and can be sharp enough to gouge flesh. Injury isn't the only risk. One wrong move and the tines could lock together for good. Unable to feed, they'd starve to death in the frozen wastes. But this bull brings his massive neck muscles into play. He avoids a deadly headlock. then changes tactics. It's a simple plan. Tip his rival off balance and open to those pointed times. The rival's losing footing and can't recover. It's a brush with death and the rival retreats. The display of strength ripples through the chasing herd. A warning look freezes them in their tracks. In the caribou world, this bull proves that size matters, and he secures his mating rights for another season. Bigger is often better when it comes to fighting. But a mouthful of sharp teeth helps too. The red fox is a lean, mean killing machine. At over 13 pounds and 20 inches at the shoulder, he's a rangy predator with narrow, flesh-piercing teeth. This animal fight night featherweight is father to four cubs, living in an abandoned badger burrow. His. The American badger is a muscle-bound heavyweight. At 26 pounds, he's twice the weight of the fox. But he's low slung, built for tunneling. His shovel-shaped head has a steely skull. Loose skin lets him turn in tight spaces. And he's a cold, calculating killer. Badger's back. He's visiting his former home and finds a fresh new food supply. The fox has to put his life on the line, or his babies will be badger brunch. This badger stumbles across a fox den, but Father Fox catches him in the act. The fox targets the head, but at twice his weight, the badger's too strong for him. He uses his height to snap down on the badger's neck. The badger's loose neck skin gives him the edge, 
and he shakes free. He turns on a dime in the tight foxhole and counters with deadly jaws. His tough skull has a pronounced sagittal crest, an elongated surface area. It forms an anchor for powerful jaw muscles, giving a savage bite that's pound for pound five times stronger than an African leopard's. The badger turns offense into defense, lowering his head to protect his throat. The fox's needle teeth bounce off the skull. He needs to find flesh. The badger wants to finish this. He bulldozes the fox downhill. But the fox finds the sweet spot. He tears through muscle at the back of the skull. It's the clincher. The badger's punch drunk and loses his nerve. He knows when he's beaten. The fox family is safe, and the badger will strike fox cub off the menu for now. Two opponents literally tear each other to shreds as aggression is unleashed in the Thai wetlands. This is a Siamese fighting fish, a small fish with a huge temper, almost as big as his fins. Siamese fighting fish bodies are just two inches long. They're armor plated with a network of tough scales. Their showy fins attract females. But this fish has an ugly side. He's a killer. It's the dry season. Hunting grounds are at a premium. This fish has been alone for a long time, which makes him even more aggressive than usual when a stranger comes muscling in. A Siamese fighting fish face-off can be a fight to the death. And their prized fins are in the firing line. The fins are mostly skin supported by soft rays. Muscles in the trunk contract, billowing the fins out like a large fan. Paper thin, they're vulnerable to attack. But in blind rage, the red loner attacks the body first. The stranger bites back and finds Finn. These males attack at faster than three feet per second. Siamese fighting fish are carnivores. Both the upper and lower jaws are lined with rows of teeth, around 40 teeth in total, all pointed and super sharp. They can tear their prey or opponent apart. Red takes the fight to his rival. He's hitting home. But the stranger uses his smarts. He's saving his energy for a kiss of death. Siamese fighting fish have gills, but in these oxygen-starved waters, they survive by breathing air from the surface. Red short on oxygen. He grows weaker by the second. He twists free, but he's done in. The stranger lunges hard and 
comes away with a jaw full of fish. His focused attack leaves Red in tatters. He's a wreck, but still breathing. The stranger writes him off and claims victory. But Red's fins could grow back. And next time, he'll be the stranger in town. When scaly fighters are armed with tooth and claw, the battle is blood-soaked. A monster's on the prowl in Australia's rocky heartland. He's a lonely sand goanna, and he's following the trail of a female. But his tongue picks up another scent that makes him fighting mad. A male love rival. This lonely heart won't rest until he's challenged him in a bloody bout of sumo wrestling. Sanguanas weigh in at 13 pounds and reach nearly five feet from nose to tail. They have a thick scaled leathery skin and powerful clawed limbs to pin down their prey. A muscle dense tail makes up over half his body length. It gives him balance, and it's a powerful asset in a fight. The Lonely Heart sees his love rival, and he wants his blood. The rival tears at the throat of the Lonely Heart. But the tough leather skin holds out. So he tries a smackdown. The Lonely Heart's pinned under. But he forces down his opponent's head. It's a grip and bite strategy. His powerful rear legs have a vice-like hold. And the biting tactics working. It looks bad for his rival. A human wrestler would have no way back. An extreme Sangoana fighting trick could be his only chance. Two giant predators lock limbs in a desperate battle. A lizard love rival is wounded and pinned down. But he has one trick left. Using his muscle-bound tail as a lever, he springs back on top. The Lonely Heart throws his rival against a rock. It's a shattering blow. Rivals losing blood. With their tails, they tripod their bodies to full height for maximum leverage. The Lonely Heart targets the neck with a pile driver. It's a tail off. A crushing victory. The Lonely Heart's powerful tail puts him at the front of the line to find a mate. And his passion makes him unstoppable.
When giant teeth are your weapon of choice, fighting is biting with a razor-sharp edge. Capybara are the world's largest rodents. They're related to guinea pigs. Eyes and nostrils near the top of their heads allow them to see and breathe while almost completely submerged. Webbed toes make them excellent swimmers. They can dive for up to five minutes. They're the hippos of the rodent world. And just like hippos, capybara mate in water. They live in herds up to 15 strong. And at their head is the kingpin. He's four years old, nearly four feet long, and weighs almost as much as a man. His teeth will never stop growing. His incisors are nearly an inch and a half long. He's a born fighter. The kingpin enjoys soul mating rights. He reigns over a harem of 12 females and young. And he lets the other males know who's boss. Capybaras have a bare lump on the top of their snout, called a morio. It produces an oily liquid that has a distinctive smell. He uses it to mark his territory, defining clear limits. But this three-year-old male doesn't respect the kingpin's boundaries. He's tired of being a bachelor. He matches the kingpin for size and has youth on his side. The kingpin's been in charge for over three years. He won't give up his privileges without raising hell first. Game on. First blood to the challenger. He's locked on to the kingpin's cheek. But lacks the experience to take full advantage. The kingpin twists and spins away. The challenger changes tactics. Up on hind legs, he gets his paws inside his opponents. The kingpin can't get a grip. The challenger bites down, just missing the Morio. It fires up the kingpin. This time he gets his front paws up first and makes it count. He lets rip with his huge incisors. The challenger has no answer to those terrible teeth and runs for his life back to no man's land. He'll need to toughen up before he mounts another challenge. The older kingpin proves what all seasoned fighters already know. Being long in the tooth can have its advantages.